All right, everyone, welcome to my YouTube studio tour 2024. Let's go. All right, so welcome to the studio. I think the first thing to sort of do is give you a bit of an overview about this room. So me and my partner Zoe have been here since the end of 2021. And this room actually started off as a white box, basically. So there was nothing in here. It's, it's designed to be a bedroom. And I sort of took that as a blank slate and built it from the ground up in a way. So there's some pieces of furniture that are even older than that uh, from when I used to make videos in my bedroom. And if you're wondering what that looks like, uh, I'll throw something up on the screen. Um, yeah, <laughs> that bedroom is really small. So yeah, this is the room and as you can see, it is now black uh, with white ceiling and like white details. So the door's white, um, the radiator is white, all the trim, the skirting board is still white and stuff, uh, as well as the blinds, uh, which you can see behind me, they're white. And we decided to keep that stuff white. So there was a bit more balance. I wanted the black walls because I feel like it adds a bit more of a cinematic vibe. So when you come in here, I wanted it to feel like a bit of a cozy space, you know, like a warm hug, you know, especially at the desk and on the sofa. I wanted it to be a kind of chilled out space. Basically what I'm looking for when I want to make music, I want it to be kind of stress free, like a mini haven inside this room. It's 2024 now and I know a lot of you have been waiting for this video for a long time. And I <laughs> but yeah it's not been overnight it's taken a long time to kind of get to this point and there's still things i'd like to do to the studio but um i think this is a good snapshot of where i'm at at the moment in 2024 so yeah let's go through some details about the room and kind of talk you through as we go so yeah this is the sofa um people who've been following me for a long time will recognize this sofa uh it used to be my sofa in my bedroom way back when <laughs> i'll throw a video of that up uh, of me probably playing guitar on it or something of a really old video of mine. It's a good spot to listen to music from here. You get um, a hell of a load of bass response, uh, which is not good for mixing, so I wouldn't mix from here, but it's very good to kind of sit with a you know, cup of tea or glass of wine or whatever and just kind of put something loud on and chill out. Essentially, I want to get some prints on this wall as well, pictures that I've taken. I've I've recently got into film photography and started taking a number of photos. I'll throw some of those up on the screen. And um, I want to get a couple printed and put on this wall. I think it'll look really cool. I think it'll help give some depth to this back wall when you walk in the room a little bit. So yeah, this is the kind of chilling out sofa area. <laughs> we'll call it area. Uh, but yeah, let's move on. So I don't think I would have been able to do this studio at all without including the um, line of Strandbergs on the guitar stand. So one of the plans going forward is to make a video about every single one of these guitars, um, it going into detail and giving them their own dedicated videos. But for now, I'll just pick up a few and give you a couple highlights about some of the guitars in the studio. So yeah, we've got the signature CK Strandberg here. And yeah, once again, I'm, I've probably been you all to death we're talking about this guitar but yeah it's an absolute beast um bare knuckle juggernauts in it five way pickup selector roasted bird's eye maple board and roasted neck and um, little ck logo on the back depending on when this video comes out these might be available for pre-owner depending on which country you're in like australia or uk um but i don't think they're available just yet on the strandberg website so sit tight if you want one of these uh, they will be available soon and then this one right here is the Salem Classic. So this is like the prototype uh, before the signature that I kind of like um, decked out myself with like black screws, black pickguard, pot cover and everything. And they do look very similar on the surface. Obviously this is just a plain maple neck and fretboard. Uh, it's still got burn knuckle juggernauts, which I put in afterward. And yeah, there's a couple of differences that are kind of more under the hood. So the body on this is the solid instead of the chambered, which is on the SIG. It's a Kume instead of a Swamp Ash. I asked for Swamp Ash on the SIG as well. And a few small other details. Obviously, there's no CK logo at the top here. And we didn't roll with the CK logo on the SIG. We wanted the engraved Strandberg Salen instead. Uh, but yeah, I recorded a load of new music with this thing and then sort of transitioned to the new guitar. But yes, still an absolute beast. I don't think I could talk about Strandbergs without talking about my very first Stromberg, which I bought in 2015. So this is a made in Korea, um, absolute gold or oldie, um, 2015 OS line Stromberg Bowden. This thing is very glossed over. <laughs> 
scratched up, beaten up in a way, and the fretboard has got loads of gunk and stuff on it in a good way. And it's just full of life. This guitar is how I would describe it. It's got belt buckle rash on the back of it from playing live. It's got a massive gash in the back of the wood from when I dropped it. And it sounds better than ever. <laughs> I love this thing. I recently recorded an entire masterclass with this guitar um, in drop D and it has black orcs in it and it's probably the most aggressive sounding Strandberg that I have. There is so much top end but it is like crystal clear, aggressive, I wouldn't say harsh, It's there's a clarity to it but it's very brutal um, and I love how that sounds and the, the split the split positions on this are just insane, so spanky, so tight. Um, but yeah, absolute beast of an instrument. It's got a really fat Endure neck on it. It's before they thinned it down. So it's like a, I would say baseball bat, but it's a, an Endure neck shaped baseball bat. Uh, but I like that. It makes me play the guitar a bit differently. It feels more like a vintage Stramberg in a really weird way, but it's absolutely lovely. Um, yeah, great guitar. It's where it all began for me in Stramberg. So yeah, fell in love with it from day one. So some of you will recognize this guitar. It is a neck through Bowden Prog um, six string. It's currently tuned to drop D flat. And if I throw in some super close B roll, you'll see that it has gold pins and screws and gold locking screws up here instead of the usual silver. And of course it's got the golden etched um, signature Nolly pickups, which are the polymaths. Uh, basically a match made in heaven, this guitar and these pickups, it sounds quite unlike any of my other guitars so anytime i'm recording rhythms that i want juicy tight fat but quite low gain in a really nice musical way i will reach for this guitar yeah i've definitely played it a lot people ask about the fretboard because it's basically glossed over at this point because i played it so much <laughs> they ask if it's rich light but it's actually emony on this guitar and yeah roasted maple neck that goes all the way through with swamp ash wings and yeah a real beast of an instrument absolutely love this thing and finally a nice little mention a nod towards the silent classic at the moment i've got 10 to 56s on here and it's tuned to d standard so it's not the perfect gauge of strings i kind of just like made it happen so these are really loose up here and they're all right <laughs> on the uh, low d side obviously with it being like a telly setup with the two single coils and the, the three-way switch it's a guitar that sounds like, well, nothing like the rest of the Strombergs that I have. So whenever I do pick it up, I end up playing quite a bit differently, which is always nice if I need to reach for a telly sound. Well, I mean, I've got basically the best playing telly that you can get, <laughs> which is nice. And it has a really nice roasted maple neck on it as well, which looks gorgeous. So yeah, silent classic, butterscotch, solid body. So there's no car. This is before they did it on the silent. So it's got really, it feels like a tally, you know, without that carve. And uh, just a big slab of wood and then a neck thrown on it, and it just sells like a massive wall of single coil tone. So what we've got here on the guitar stand is my bass, which is a Bowden Prog 5 bass from Stramberg, which I've done a video, actually a couple of videos about this already. Yeah, I've had this for about a year, maybe a year? Uh, ever since I got it, I've uh, massively appreciated bass <laughs> because I've realized, one, how hard it is to play, and um, I think I've gotten a bit better at playing bass in a year. And two, um, I love how unique this thing sounds. And yeah, if you want a full video on this bass, I've got two. I've got my first impressions video. And I've also got like a 25 minute full, full blown review of this thing. But yeah, it's on all of my upcoming music and all less stated. Every time you hear bass in a demo song, it's going to be this. I just love it so much. And yeah, Nordstrand pickups wired in parallel and yeah mostly just use the bridge pickup these days sometimes i use both for different applications maybe a cleaner sound but i really like how this bridge pickup sounds on its own and yes absolutely sick instrument so we should probably talk about the desk <laughs> the studio desk in this is an absolute beast it's a soundbird desk in natural oak and it is everything i've always wanted in a studio desk I love this thing so much. Um, it's probably a coincidence, but I've been writing music I've been so much happier with since getting this desk. Um, the workflow is just so much nicer. There's so much more room and space here. I like having rack space, 19-inch uh, rack space. 
and eventually I want to swap some of the things out in here, which we'll go into detail in a little minute. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm just absolutely ecstatic about this thing. It's so nice and it fits the vibe of the room so much better than my previous desk. And yeah, let's talk about some of the features. So one of the cool things about this desk is the concealed keyboard tray, which if you push here, opens up and then you can kind of pull the rest down and inside is my 88 key key lab mark ii from arcturia um i'm not very good at playing keyboard or piano and i want to get a lot better but this is a very nice uh, midi controller so the thing that i have been doing a lot of is orchestra and arranging with orchestra so these faders are immense for that so i've got these two programmed to be um, expression and dynamics in all of the Spitfire plugins. So even if I play something simple like that and kind of write the automation as I go, sometimes I might play it like that and then after the fact I'll go and perform the automation and then record over it like that. But this keyboard has just made me realize the range of instruments having the 88 keys has made me appreciate that like, you know, your first violins might sit a bit higher up here and then the seconds, and then you've got your violas and then celli. And that applies for all of the families of the orchestra. And um, yeah, I'm trying to get better at keyboard and piano as a result, but it is a long process and I usually play guitar. <laughs> Jokes aside, having it integrated in the desk this way is so much more conducive to workflow and how I like to operate anyway. I like to maybe sit with the guitar, record something, and then add a keyboard part, whether that's orchestra or synth or something, like immediately afterwards. And I don't like to put the guitar down, I just like to sit and then kind of work seamlessly in that fashion. So having a dedicated keyboard tray that fits a keyboard like this is absolutely sick. And one of the coolest features is it's a soft close. So I get to do this and then not worry about it slamming back into the desk. So let's talk about the rack space that I mentioned before. So what I've got is a quad cortex on a slide out tray. So if I ever need it, I can kind of pull it out and edit a preset or whatever I want to do with the quad. Uh, then I've just got a little spacer above it. I've got power conditioner here just in case there's ever been a power cut which has never been but um it just gives more secure power i suppose to all of this stuff which is cool now uh, i've got vault 276 so these two wine cables are actually the quad cortex so the two xlr outs go from the back of the quad and then into the interface and it's as simple as that so sometimes what i'll do is if i want to use a plug-in and not the quad cortex i actually just have a preset on the quad which is a DI. <laughs> so it just goes straight into here and I've got a DI sound. So then I can just chuck a plugin on in Logic if that's what I wanted. Sometimes I actually blend too. I might use an amp from the Quad Cortex, but use something like a reverb and delay from say, I don't know, Archetype and Bassy and then roll with something like that. So yeah, it's cool to have that kind of versatility. If I ever want to just stick to the quad, I usually do that for the rhythms. I just have rhythm tones on my quad that I basically love. And then if I have more creative parts, I might reach for a plugin and try pedals and stuff inside like Archetype Rabia. But more often than not, I'll blend the two in most of my tracks, especially ones that I'm working on at the moment. And then basically we've got an NTK power supply for that microphone there. So if I'm ever recording the acoustics, I need to flip that on and then plug it in. Um, but that doesn't happen too often. And then yeah, on the left, we've basically just got a drawer full of strings. <laughs> and cloths and stuff like that everything a little guitar nerd like me would need um in my studio is basically in there so mostly yeah like supplies and stuff like a chocolate bar i'm joking it's not a chocolate bar in there so in terms of what i'm actually running as the computer here it's a mac m2 studio from 2023 the speakers that it's going into are a pair of jbl 305 mark 2 p's or something like that they are basically like the cheapest speakers you can buy so that's probably going to be my next upgrade when i can afford something a bit better but i know how they sound so i'm kind of reluctant to change out something that i know works for me personally they might not sound the best for someone else but i know what my bass and i know what my low end sounds like through these in this room they weren't great in this room and the sound panels and all the treatment in this room is just four panels from gik acoustics I could definitely do more, but it's very expensive. And again, it's just that sort of thing, like what I need my room to sound like works for me. So without these, it sounded awful. Um, and then the rest of the furniture is always gonna help. 
But then when I got these four in, um, as well as the speaker stands, which are very good, um, they kind of transformed how the speakers themselves sound. The low end is a lot more clear and defined, but it isn't overbearing. There isn't a ridiculous amount of low end. But yes, really happy with how this room sounds. If I ever need to check a mix, honestly, pair of AirPods. <laughs> Because everyone uses them, so if your mix sells good on a pair of those, he makes as good in my opinion. And yeah, I mean, I could talk for probably days and days about mixes anyway. So yeah, let's just leave that there. <laughs> Honorary mention to the chair I'm sat on. I get a lot of questions about this chair for some reason. I think it's because the arms go up and down. Um, but many chairs, arms go up and down these days, you just got to know what you're looking for. I've had this chair ages and it's just like an Amazon Basics thing that I bought uh, probably about four years ago, if not longer. Um, yeah, so long ago that you can probably find it in my very old videos in my bedroom. Um, and it's come with me, it's beginning to fall apart. The fake leather is uh, starting to give up, but it's lasted four years. so. That and the speakers are probably my next upgrades for the studio, but when that happens, I'll probably let you all know. If you've enjoyed this video, let me know um, with a comment. And if I've missed anything, also comment as well. A question if I've probably probably missed something, haven't I? Let's be real. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just shout out and let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So if you want to see more stuff like this, then do the YouTube stuff. Uh, subscribe and like, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next week. It's in a bit.